What's up guys, Phil DeRue back again with DeRue Strong Training Systems and American Top Team Strength and Conditioning Coach. I've been getting a lot of questions lately about what are my five good exercises for optimizing combat sports performance. So I got to thinking about it and um, you know I decided to put together this list and to show you guys exactly what I would do um, to get my fighters ready and what I do also uh, when it comes down to fight camps and out of camp conditioning and strength training. So here they are. Okay, so the first one we're going to talk about is the Zercher Squat. Now, why I like the Zercher Squat is because it puts the body in the same positioning as you would in the cage or in the ring, depending upon, you know, what you're trying to accomplish. It also helps with being able to actively work on that hip hinge factor. And a lot of the times with combat sport athletes, they're tight in the hips because of just sport specific training. So what this allows the, the hips to do is actually sit back in that position to actually get a good squat position and to utilize the muscles needed to squat the weight up. It also has high transferability to the sport because of the position of the bar path and how you're, you know, you're positioned on the floor. So it actually can go into something like a, uh, a double underhooks takedown off the cage or something like a blast double, but it utilizes the same muscle groups and it puts the body in the right position to make sure we're optimizing that performance from a physical preparation standpoint. The second one is gonna be a dumbbell glute bridge floor press. Now, why I decided to do a glute bridge with the traditional floor press, and I like to do this primarily with dumbbells instead of a barbell, just because of the free range of motion. And for fighters, you know, a lot of the times I don't want to put their joints in a fixed position because, you know, a lot of the times they're getting injured doing their training in general. So to eliminate the stiffness, to eliminate that, that torque of the joints, I go with a dumbbell. And why I do a glute bridge is so that they can get that activation of the glutes to get full force production throughout the entire body. And also, it actually has a high transferability just to say like if somebody's got you mounted or something like that, it gives you a good kind, good kind of a formation to a bridge and roll perspective. So that's why I like to do it from there. The third is a dumbbell walking split squat Zercher good morning. Now I know that's a mouthful, but what this is going to actually do is actually kind of takes into a transferability standpoint. It takes you into a double leg takedown. You can see as I go through this movement that when I step, I'm actually dipping and hip hinging back and then driving my elbows through like I got double underhooks. And then from there, I'm forcing my hips up and driving my elbows up to the ceiling creating that posterior chain strength, but also it's a unilateral factor because I have one foot in front of the other, just like I would if I had to do a blast double or something along the lines of that. The fourth one is gonna be a banded dumbbell row. Now, with this banded dumbbell row, I do not grab the handle, I actually grab the outsides of the dumbbell so that I can actually have some grip uh, strength integrated into that movement pattern. The way I attach the band is I make sure when they roll or when, you know, we pull back on that dumbbell, we're getting the greatest stretch of that band, giving us accommodated resistance at the end of that movement so we can get a maximal contraction without having to slow down our rate of force. Okay, so for number five, I want to go with a tall kneeling anti-rotation or a payoff press. Now, the reason why I like it in a tall kneeling position is because I can activate my glutes and also it has transferability to say that if I was sitting in somebody's guard and I'm trying to base myself out so I do not get swept, it has the same type of mechanism or movement pattern that you would to activate those transverse abdominals to make them stronger so you do not get swept or turned over. Um, another thing is that you guys are doing rotational strength exercises or rotational power movements all the way through throughout the week with your skills training, throwing hooks and kicks and things like that. So for me, I want to make sure that we're optimizing our efficiency as a physical preparation standpoint to make sure that we are getting strength in those transverse abdominals by not actually rotating and using an isometric component to get stronger in those abdominal region so that when we go to throw our hooks and throw our kicks, we have maximal force production through that strengthening that we did with that anti-rotation. All right, guys, so that was my five exercises for combat sports performance. I hope you liked the video. If you do like the video, 
and you want to hear more, hit that subscribe button so you can get new videos every time I come out. And if you have any questions, go ahead and hit that comment box below so I can answer your questions there. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.